From dream to reality, this is your step-by-step -step guide to successfully launching your own gym business from zero to over $50,000 per month. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Coach Will with Big Little Gyms. I work with over 500 active gym owners. I've owned two different uh, local independent, uh, small if you will call them, but six, very, very successful gyms in a couple different markets. And I wanna share with you guys uh, the answer to a very, very common question I get. So I work with a lot of gym owners. I spend all day on calls talking to gym owners, helping them grow. And uh, occasionally I get someone who gets in my funnel who's looking to start a gym. They're not yet a gym owner. They are interested in owning a gym and they, they will book a call with me and, and we'll spend a lot of time discussing something that hasn't even happened yet. So what I wanted to do is do a video for all you guys considering opening a gym to pretty much give you this guidance and mentorship for free without you having to pay for it, right? Because I don't really sell the, the that side of things, right? And honestly, I think like just going through these step-by-steps, you guys will do a fantastic job getting yourself set up. So that way, once you do get your gym open and you're going or you're close to getting it open, then you can come to us and we can have the conversation about what's next and getting the right things in order to actually help your gym grow, right? So um, when you're starting a business, any business, not just the gym, how it will grow and scale and come to fruition, the goals and dreams that you have for it, have a lot to do with the planning and the visualization you do prior to even opening it, right? What a lot of people do will do and where they will make mistakes is they will get a wild hair, they'll say, I wanna open a gym, and oftentimes they're doing it for two reasons. A, they're doing it because they're passionate about it and they love the subject matter of the thing they're selling, right? If it's a gym, it's often because they're a trainer or a coach and they love training people, or they love fitness, or they love being around it, or they themselves, you know, want a gym that they can train in and rather than, you know, go to one of the other options in town that don't really fulfill their needs, they choose to build it, right? They choose to build it themselves. Um, so those are often, I mean, and for me, my first business was that way. My first gym I started, I was already a very successful entrepreneur. I owned a business that we owned a company that was a, uh, that had warehouses in two states, both California and Arizona. And when I was in California, I had this huge warehouse space. It was 15,000 square feet. And we used to do import export for landscaping products. And we used to wholesale landscaping products all over the globe. And uh, that's why we were in California is because we were close to the ports and it made a lot of sense to have a warehouse there. And uh, when I was there, I found CrossFit and I had an amazing experience with CrossFit and I loved it. And I noticed the area that the warehouse was in did not really have uh, an option for CrossFit around it. There were a couple options, but they were really, really small and they weren't really, you know, they were, they were gyms that weren't really pushing them, putting themselves out there and they weren't really taking advantage of the available market. So I saw not only an opportunity to build something I wanted to do, but I saw an opportunity to provide a service to the local community and actually market it because my background is in sales and marketing. That's what I've been able to do successfully for all my businesses and what I do for all the businesses I work with now. And um, that part comes very natural to me. That system, the sales and marketing system of growing a business comes very natural, comes very natural to me. So we had this warehouse space and I said, you know, we, you know, we can, we can basically quarantine off, you know, one third of this warehouse and um, we can build a gym in it, right? We already have the space. And so we did, and we grew that gym to a couple hundred members and I think it did, you know, ten to fifteen thousand dollars in profit after all the expenses were paid on average per month. And me and my business partner, who I who I partnered up with to run that gym, split the profits. And on top of my other business, we we're doing very very well. And he also did very very well with his share of the business as well. So, you know, we did that, and then we also opened a second location when we moved back to Arizona. And that time, it was less, you know, build the plane as you fly, and it was more of a strategic opening, uh, doing more of a pre-launch strategy, like I'm going to share with you guys here in this video today. So I wanted to share with you that first, a little bit of my experience, that you, and letting you know that we've done it. We've, we've, we've been down this path in a couple of different markets. And it's important to know in the videos that you spend time listening to and the people you spend time getting results or getting um, strategy from is that they've actually done it because there's a lot of generic advice out there on how to open a business. You know, And people will say things that are very ethereal and altruistic in regards to starting a business, but it's often not very practical. So I wanna jump into that today. So uh, we've got, we got two parts to this video here and we'll go through the first part of it. And if there's time, we'll go through the second part of it as well. If not, I may break it out into a second video. I don't know, I just decided to jump on and record this after I created this checklist. It was basically a big brain dump of everything I could possibly think of um, you know, in regards to opening a gym. So pre-launch planning strategy. Um, number one, guys, you're gonna to wanna to do market research on the area before you consider opening, right? There's a lot of gyms, we work with over 500 gyms, and a lot of the gyms that are struggling that come to us, sometimes they come to us because they didn't, they've been in business a long time and they didn't do their research prior to opening, right? They've, 
they may have opened a business that didn't even need to be open, right? But they wanted to open it and it, it is what it is and we helped them grow anyways, right? But oftentimes I will see that they didn't do their market research and they opened their gym in a, in a place where demographically it wasn't very supportive or they picked the, you know, because rent was cheap, they picked the wrong corner in town and people are having to drive past 30 other gyms to get to them. And as a result, no one drives to them, even though they might be doing a lot of marketing and things like that. So you want to start with doing competitive analysis, right guys? So you want to start and you want to start this online, right? Because these days the internet is pretty much the storefront, like being on main street and having a storefront on main street is nice and you're going to get foot traffic and that's great. And that's, that's a fantastic position to be in, but you don't have to do that to get people to see your business anymore. These days, most people are gonna are gonna do, especially the most intentful buyers, the people that are looking for a gym, are gonna do a Google search, right? If I, you know, and it's just common sense, right? That if I'm looking for a plumber, I'm gonna Google it, right? If I'm looking for a uh, electrician because I got my powers out, I'm gonna Google it. If I'm looking for a new restaurant, I'm gonna Google it, right? Most people will just type in what they're looking for in their internet browser and that internet browser uses Google as a search engine. It's gonna show them what's nearby. And that's probably how they're gonna find you for the most part, right? Social media and things like that are also an important way for people to find you, but that's more what's called interruption advertising. If you wanna get in front of the people that are searching for what you're selling on the internet, that's mostly Google right now. Um, and, and a couple other search engines like Bing and things like that, right? So that's what you wanna focus on when in your competitive analysis is like how, you know, and my position locally, right? Both location and, and foot traffic as well, because you know, if people are searching on Google, for example, and in most of your demographic, the people that you're looking to serve that make the kind of money that are gonna be able to afford your membership, they're gonna probably live in a certain neighborhood in a certain part of town. It's usually how it works in most metropolises is you know, people with money all live in the same area, right? And uh, if you open a gym, you know, say near there, but on the wrong corner where it's people driving away from you or in the other direction, or if they just tend to do business more on the other side of town, more than likely, you know, you're gonna have a tougher time serving that population of people because you're asking them to go out of the way, right? And as a result, it's gonna, you might solve a problem for them in regards to fitness, but you might create a problem for them in regards to their commute, right? So you wanna think about these things ahead of time. And if you can uh, acquire a space that has good foot traffic and uh, viewability from the streets, that's always a bonus, right? But both of my gyms were started, you know, in were both in spaces that were like down, you know, the off beaten path, you know, my first gym was down a cul-de-sac that ran along some train tracks and it was, you know, not the greatest street to be on, but it was in the middle of the area. It was kind of in the commercial zone of the area where all the people lived that could afford and would want our product. Our second gym was the same way. It was on a street where there were strip clubs and, you know, commercial buildings and all these things like kind of more urban, but to the south and to the north of us, the demographics were very supportive. And the thing that I always looked at was where the freeways went and the, tw the direction traffic was going, right? If I could be on their commute to work and on the way to commute back home, I didn't necessarily need to be in their neighborhood. I could just be on the way. And that's very convenient for a lot of people because sometimes that's actually more convenient. They can just get off the exit before home, come to your gym, get back on the freeway and drive, then drive home. You know, these are things that are important to think about that I find that a lot of gyms don't think about because either the real estate isn't available or they just don't do their research, right? Now you're gonna to wanna to also, you know, one of the easiest ways to do market strategy is what I call the Burger King strategy. So Burger King has made their entire brand, which is a billion dollar plus brand, off of the backs of just basically copying McDonald's, right? So rather, so McDonald's, in order to open a new location, because they're the, the market leader in what they do and like a uh, low price mass produced fruit offering, you know, fast food, they will spend like, I think something like, you know, one to $5 million in market research per location to make sure demographically and traffic wise, um, all the things are there that they need to support the growth of that new location. Uh, Burger King won't do that same strategy. What they'll do is they'll just wait for a McDonald's to open up and then they'll open up a couple doors down and just leverage all that same traffic, right? And of course, McDonald's knows they're gonna do this, so they're taking that into account too. And Burger King knows that McDonald's is thinking about them. So they basically get to use McDonald's's, um, you know, market research for free, right? And in opening a gym, uh, you could do the same thing with some of the big brands. Now, most of the gyms I work with tend to be functional fitness, um, CrossFit, some martial arts, some boot camp gyms. A lot of group fitness training uh, people work with me when they open their gyms. And these are gyms that are running classes of 15, 20, 30 people multiple times a day, usually in the member range of you know anywhere between 100 and 500 members. Um, and these types of gyms, you know, the big brands in the place, the McDonald's, if you will, of those are gonna be brands like Orange Theory and F45, right? So 
if you want to know where to open up in your area, you could pretty much look and see where Orange Theory F45 opened up in your area. And if an F45 in, or an Orange Theory opened up in your area, that's a really, really good sign that you're in a good market because Orange Theories and F45s, they're not trying to move into hyper competitive areas where there's only a small number of people they can serve. They're trying to move in areas where there's not, there's not going to be any ceiling on their growth and the only limiter is going to be the four walls of their, their, their business. So Orange Theories, for example, they, it costs a million dollars plus to open an Orange Theory location. They're very selective as to who they'll even allow to open a, a, a location and where they can open it up. And um, they'll do all that market research to make sure that they can pretty easily, just on their brand uh, brand awareness alone they built, that they can fill that gym out with five to 600 people paying you know an average client value of $250 or $300. Um, F45s are right behind them. Um, in fact, F45s probably use Orange Theory's uh, market research because F45s tend to open up in the same area that an Orange Theory is. And uh, Orange Theory and F45s, they're, uh, I would say, just a step down from Orange Theory in regards to uh, brand awareness. So like similar, they want to, they want to open up a place where they can easily, even with other gyms being there and an orange theory being there, that they could easily nab, you know, four or 500 members just on their brand awareness alone without having to do a lot of marketing, you know, uh, within the first year or two at an average client value of $200 plus. Right. So if I were just to do a quick screen share with you guys and just kind of, you know, do an example of this, you know, uh, let's go ahead and just open up my screen here and just show you how I would do this. You know, I would type in, say, you know, my area here, gyms near me. And I would go here and then I'm going to scroll down to what's called the map pack here. OK, so uh, go to the map pack here and you can see this is where I live right here. And, uh, you know, I could see in my area, I can zoom in um, and my market research. I know my area very, very well. This is a very, very fluent area here. Arcadia is probably the wealthiest suburb in the entire state and probably one of the more wealthiest suburbs in the entire country um you know big 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 money here and then over here is a lot of like um middle upper class executives and um people that have a little bit more control over their income a lot of people other entrepreneurs and salespeople and stuff like that so like in the area obviously it's very saturated we've got you know camp, you know crossfit we've got orange theory we've got f45 we've got uh, more crossfits we got this street right here there just happens to be some reasonably priced real estate for rent and gyms just line up in that area, right? So I can already see there's an F45 and an Orange Theory and both of these brands are higher profile brands. So they're kind of right here in the more downtown area where the rents are higher. Um, and both of these locations I've been by and they both do very, very well. They're, they're both like just packed full of people every time I go by, right? These gyms down here are a little bit more of the independents. And, you know, I'd say it's hit or miss. When I go by them, it depends on the time of the day. They might be busy at the peak hours, but then there's times of the day where I go by there, like when... They have a class running and there's just a handful of people in there, right? So obviously the location makes a big difference. The brand makes a big difference. But if I see an F45 in an Orange Theory, you know, more than likely that means there's more than enough to go around. And I would say for sure that all these gyms in this area, you know, are at the very least getting by. You know, nobody, I don't, you know, not a lot of gyms in this area seem to go out of business. Um, if they do, it's because they're probably mismanaged. But most of these gyms that have been around have been here for a decade and, you know, will probably continue to be here because... The market supports it, right? So I'm looking for market support is what I'm looking for there in my uh, competitive analysis, right? You also want to look for uh, vo you know voids in the local offerings, right? So if like if you're someone that likes CrossFit and you look in your area and there is an F45 and there is an Orange Theory and there is a you know all the other big brands and there's not a CrossFit gym, then like you probably should open that gym there uh, <laughs> because that means there's going to be people that are looking for something new and different, right? And that's the key thing here is differentiating yourself, right? So Differentiating yourself is uh, very, very important, right? Like in marketing, that's really what it's all about. It's not about being better. Like in the eyes of someone who's buying something, what people are excited about, what makes people want to try something out is not something that's new or something that's something that's better than the existing thing. People don't really, you know, people will pay attention to improvement, improvement offers, but they don't necessarily buy improvement offers. Improvement offers are kind of like, ah, oh, cool, but maybe only if I really, really need it, right? Will I make, will I sacrifice what I'm doing now to go make that switch, to make that opportunity switch to the new thing? Really what makes people want to move is that it's different, right? If, some, if they're bored, if they're stagnated, if uh, the offerings in the area have been there a long time and um, something new and exciting comes along, they will, they will come running towards it. People love novelty. People love new and different things. And even if you're opening up a gym where there's already, like say it's a CrossFit gym, for example. You know, I keep using that example and that's because that's what I own. But when I opened up my second gym, there were already a lot of gyms in the area. I actually opened up my gym. My gym was, um, if I just zoom out on this map, I no longer own this gym. I sold this gym, but it was right over here. So it's actually this gym right here. Um, and 
you know, we opened up over here kind of away from everybody. And uh, we, but we, again, like we thought more about the traffic going by this freeway. The 202 freeway here was, was pretty much where everybody going east to west takes to get downtown from the suburbs over here to the east. And so we knew we could open up over here off the beaten path on, a, on this Washington Street here, which is where there's not a lot of gyms, but there was cheap real estate. We found a great space that was expandable that we could grow into over the years. And uh, we actually were bigger than most all the gyms in this area over here. We had 350 members at one point. Uh, and it's supposed to be thought strategically about where people were going on their commute. And all people had to do is exit right here on Priest Road and they could get to us, whether they were going to work downtown or going home east uh, to the suburbs to the east here. And then we were also close to Arizona State University right here. And then we were also just south of Old Town, where sometimes people would work here in Old Town, but if they couldn't afford to live in the area, they lived down here in Tempe. So we were just thinking strategically and demographically about the commute, right? And that's very important is you can find a lot of opportunity in, area, in an area where people are thinking less obviously about where to position their gym, right? Like no one at the time would have probably thought to open a gym here in, on, at this particular corner. And that's because, you know, if we zoom in here, like literally across the street was like, you know, an equipment company, another equipment company, um, you know, let's see, uh, they probably won't show them here on the, on the map, but there's a couple strip clubs um, and then some like, uh, you know, uh, multi-family housing and then a lot of just businesses, right? So like, it didn't look like the most inviting place to open a gym because no one lives on the street, right? But thinking about the commute and the demographics of the area, we actually were able to be one of the best gyms in the area doing that, right? So that was how we did it, right? Um, and you're gonna wanna think about that. Demographics, income and demand. And you can, in, income, in, income is essentially like, you know, what do they make? Do they make enough money to support paying, you know, your optimal price point, right? And not at a discount, right? Like, can this area afford $200 a month for CrossFit, if that's what you're selling? You know, and do they want it, right? Like, it, does the area have, and they don't need to necessarily want the exact methodology you're selling, like say you're a CrossFit gym. They don't necessarily need to uh, want CrossFit per se. It just needs to be an area where like fitness is in demand, right? Fitness is a part of the lifestyle, right? There's some markets where like people are active and people like to be out. And like one thing that we knew about our location with our gym is right here <clears throat> was the Papago Park, which is a, a city park with a bunch of foothills. And it, here in Phoenix in general, we're surrounded by mountains and we're in a valley. And people live a pretty active lifestyle here. Like hiking is a very normal thing. Uh, where I moved from when I grew up in outside Detroit, Michigan, was a place where people mostly didn't go out for hikes and they weren't, it wasn't a very active lifestyle place, at least in the neighborhood I grew up in. Um, and in the neighborhood I grew up in there, it probably would have been, you know, like people wouldn't have been going out of their way to find gyms. You, they would have had to stumble upon them. You would have had to make a very unique proposition to get them to come try you out. But here in Phoenix, like right next to this park, you know, there's people that live near this park. They like the mountain bike. There's a, there's a trail, there's trails and there's, um, a lot of hiking paths and there's like city parks that go through here and uh so a very active lifestyle and an affinity for uh for for like being active in the area right so again positioning my gym close to that demographically supported it and the people also in this area like these people up here are you know multiple six-figure earners people over here are six-figure plus earners um if anything where we didn't want to pull from is over here near the airport because this area was like lower earning but again we weren't thinking about where necessarily these people live we were thinking about where they were coming from and we knew that a lot of them were coming from east to west or from north to south um and we were on the path and we were also in an area where they were very they're often going anyways to be active in the city park here the botanical garden and all these things so these are just things you want to think about in your pre-launch now that's going to be it for this video guys um there's a whole lot more i'm going to go through here including defining your business model location and facilities we already kind of just talked about a little bit financial planning equipment and supplies marketing and promotion uh, member experience and retention and legal administrative cons considerations. I highly recommend um, you go through those next videos as I release them, uh, you know, and and go through these steps, right? Because at the end of the day, if you don't take your time and do this right, like, and you just move into the first place you find, or maybe you don't do your research, and, or you just, you know, you don't put strategic thought into this, like, sure, it might save you a little time and energy now because it's easy because of whatever you might find, but it will make the next five, six, seven, ten 10 years of life, your life very difficult if you don't put a little bit of energy into this prior to opening. Now, you don't need to overthink it. It's all just the things we talked about here on this video. So that's it. If you guys found this video helpful, like, give me a like so other people know it was helpful. Comment, share some of the things that you've done if you're a gym owner 
or if uh, you know it was helpful for you, just comment. Uh, subscribe as well for more details if you're considering opening a gym. We're going to have a whole series here on these things. I'm going to roll out the next video here. And uh, if you are an active gym owner and you've already opened your space, uh, which is why I'm creating these videos, is for you guys that haven't opened your space or don't have a lease yet, um, you know, just watch these videos. This is all you're going to need for now. Once you have your space and your lease and you're ready to get your marketing stuff up and going, get your website up and going, get your, your CRM up and going, get your marketing stuff up and going, you want mentorship and guidance on how to grow the gym in a competitive market, that's where you can work with Big Little Gyms. BigLittleGyms.com. If you go there, fill out the form, name, phone number, email, very simple, basic information. Uh, and then after you fill that out, we'll reach out and connect with you and just see how we can help. Um, so have a good day, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.